And these guys have 10 laps ahead of them once the pace vehicle has left the track. Okay, Sheldon Olling, one of the rookies. Son of Lindsay Olling, driver from the 60s, Ron Liddell, car 52. Inside second row, Alan Day, alongside of him, Johnny Church. One row further back to John Field. And on the outside, Terry King. And then to the man most would say will figure prominently this or two, Troy Jenkins in car number 78. And Bobby Woods in car number 13. The pace vehicle has left the circuit. They come towards the main straightaway. Brand new clay racing surface. Track open, ready for racing. Hit number one for the midgets, and they let them run. John Church slips into second spot in behind Ron Liddell as they go to the back straightaway. King looking for a run down the outside as they move down towards turn number three the first time. One of the fast movers is Alan Day in car number 74. And coming from the back of the field, both Troy Jenkins and Bob Woods. Troy Jenkins now rounded by Woods as they go to the top turn. Not yielding ground, though, as they go towards the back straightaway. Woods goes up a little high, loses pace as uh, Troy Jenkins moves into third spot. It's Liddell leading. Liddell leading Day. Running third is Troy Jenkins. Then comes Johnny Church, followed through by Wood. They're very close together. The cars touch. And King gets shunted back in the field. Troy Jenkins is the mover, though. And look at the boy around the outside. Troy the boy moves into occupied position number one. Ronnie Liddell trying to fight back. We've got two off down the back. Oh! One guy clipping the safety tyres. A-OK -okay, back onto the track. And that is car number 15. Craig Neal. Troy Jenkins blistering the field in this one. He comes out of turn number four. What a quick track we have here at PCR tonight. Jenkins down the main straightaway to one and two. Bobby Woods moves up into third. Uh-uh, make that second as they go down the back straightaway. Jenkins, I think, will have too much of a gap on Woods as they come out of four. As they come across the strike this time, there's half race distance. There's five down, we have five remaining. John Church involved in a great battle further back in the pack with Johnny Field. Churchy, the boy, birthday boy, a long time member of the New South Wales Speed Car Association. Back in about fifth place. Woods trying as he can. He goes down into one and two. A nice line as he exits down the back straightaway. But Troy Jenkins is the race leader and looking good at this stage. Weather time. Uh-oh, we have a problem with the Jenkins car. Troy the boy pulls to the inside. Bobby Woods goes around the outside. All of a sudden, Jenkins looks though he's jumped back on the gas. Well, that's been the Jenkins story all season. Bad luck as dog, the 78 car, but as Andy, oh, back straight away, almost upside down as John Field gathered the car up and continues on. But now it's Troy Jenkins who's found the power plant once more and chases out after Bob Woods, who uh, capitalised on his misfortune three laps ago. Towards the main straightaway, one lap from the jacket flag. 13 is not an unlucky number. Not when it's uh, on the tail of a car driven by Bob Woods. He goes to the back chute, and in fact, if anyone should be worried or superstitious about numbers, I guess it should be Troy Jenkins, because he's trailing into the jacket flag. Final corner, main straightaway, twice. Feature race winner this season, it's Bobby Woods, back home in victory lane. Second goes to Troy Jenkins in car number 78, and third home, Alan Day in car number 74. The race time was 2 minutes 55.77. 2 minutes 55. Point seven. It's the straightaway ready for a start. Mark Brown will be keen to get some points on the board or some racing under his belt as they cross the line. It's Glenn Stewart in front. Look at Bowen. He's into fourth as they go through the first corner. Towards the back straightaway, it's Mark Brown just ahead of him on the inside. Taken off the circuit goes Bowen. As they come to the turn three for the first time, it's Morris looking around for the lead. Glenn Stewart's got it, but here comes Bowen running high and making up the ground he just lost. Morris looks for the lead this time, cautiously goes middle track around the outside of Glenn Stewart. Brown decides to do the same. The Victorian gets off the pace a little, comes back on it as they go through the top turn, and he's got Bowen following him. Bowen trying now to get some, some power on in the right places on the track. Stewart holds on to third place as they go through the top turn, but it's the black and gold 75 car finally emerging in the front running position. Back in third as they go to the top turn, ahead of him, Mark Brown of Victoria and Brett Morris in car. 17. Rod Bowen moves up in 
to second place at the expense of Mark Brown. And Bowen sets his side on one of his close friends, Brett Morris. No friends on the clayway, they say. Down into three and four, and gee, I'll tell you what, this Bowen Cosworth engine is really performing early on tonight. Morris with the Fontana at his feet comes out of turn number two. There's five and a half racing laps remaining, so there's still plenty of time. Anything probably will happen. Still in third place is Mark Brown. Don't count out the fast Victorian as they come down the main straightaway. It is Morris, Bowen, Brown, Stewart, Howe, Parton, and Rotherick. Okay, a couple of errors from Rod Bowen in the opening laps, but he's made amendments for that and has come back in with a force to be reckoned with. He's now moving to the tail of the 17 car. He's got enough time to do it. He certainly appears with the Cosworth underneath him to have the power to pull off a, a victory here. And he really is now starting to hone his talent and concentrating on where he's putting the car on the track. He's caught his prey. Now it's a matter of getting past. Looks to the inside as they go the back straight away. Three laps to go. Now starting to look a little more sedate in his driving. Rod Bowen knows he only has one car to pass. He's got three laps to do it. Comes off the top turn, favours the inside line. He's prepared to go wherever it's needed to get around and claim the lead, but he's counting on Morris going up track. Down the back straight away, we've got an exciting finish coming our way. Yep, that we do as Bowen hones in on Morris. Has a look on the inside as they come into three and four. Bowen's but a car length, and we've only got 450 to go as they duck down into turn number one. Where's Bowen going to try his move? Time is running out as they go down the back straightaway. Is this lap car going to play havoc? Morris uses it to his best. Good driving, smart driving from Ben Morris, and he takes the checkered flag. Second place to Bowen, third place to Mark Brown. Great drive there from Brett Morris, a time of 254.44 in behind Stephen Graham. I tell you what, if you can keep sign of Graham, not going to get much finer teacher. They jump on as they come out of turn number four. Adrian Ma takes the lead as they go down out of turn number two. There'd be a fair bit of rivalry in this one, Andy, when you just look at the makeup of the field. There's Glenn Ravel going through. He'd be feeling more confident now, the New South Wales title holder. Oh, look at Pollock. Not much margin of error there as Pollock stuck the... Uh, the 54 on the inside of him and said, don't make a mistake. He does it again as they go towards the back straightaway. Norm Jackson sitting back saying, I'll be a spectator for this one for a few minutes. And further back in the field is Stephen Graham, who now starts his run through using the high line of the track and no doubt enjoying it, but wish he was up a little closer. Adrian Maher is the leader. Gary Pollock is second. Ravella's running third. Then comes Jackson onto the binders when 14. Jackson uh, appeared to back off, but Stephen Graham's now back into the throttle division and uh, running in fifth place but having an awkward drive through the field not having a smooth run which he'd hoped for. He is also doing very well as Wilkinson at the back of the pack. Sure he's not up there with the leaders but keeping a very straight line about mid-track. Down the main straight as I said it's the number 91's first outing tonight. Oh I think I put the curse on him a little wide. Barr is the race leader. What a battle we have going back here as they come across the checker. Stephen Graham, Norm Jackson, Gavin Lear and Phil Chilton all involved here. Race leader is Adrian Mann. He is doing a fantastic job out front, though he's starting to get reeled in by Gary Pollock, who, as Steve said, won the first main event here, season 93-94. Ma and Pollock come round to lap car number 91. The rookie, the debutant, Sean Wilkinson. Oh, Pollock. I think yeah. we've got a fire underneath the, the hood in that car. The bad luck continues. He shuts it down and heads back to the pits. The field has spread pretty pretty dramatically in this one with still four laps out from the chequered flag. Adrian Ma doesn't mind. And uh, Sean Wilkinson has now passed on the inside. Sean, as uh, Andy mentioned, having his first run, passed on the inside by Ravel. Glenn Ravel, that is. And he's followed through by Stephen Graham. Graham, winner of two feature races this season in one of the best presented speed cars racing in Australia. Glenn Ravel, third generation driver, Stephen Graham, second generation. Doesn't mean we've got five between them, but there's a wealth of experience in those two families. Adrian Mars, the race leader, coming into turn number three. Oh, Ma! Oh, but puts the car around sideways. And what a greeting party he would have had with these two 
Jarekness coming round, looking him right in the eye. Barr holds on. He comes down the back straight away. It's looking very, very good at this stage for the number 86. Takes it once again smoothly through three and four. The race winner is Adrian Barr. Second place in the battle rages on Ravel by a car length to Stephen Graham. Followed by Chilton and Gavin Lear at time 253.14 seconds. 253.14. 1994 at PCR. Nice Bobby Woods in car number 13. We're ready for the green flag. Off the top turn towards the main straightaway. They've got a green. Let's keep an eye on Bobby Woods in this one. Main straightaway got forked. Number 17 at least. That's Brett Morris. Something dropped off one of the cars. It looks like a bit of cowling as they go down the back straightaway. It's enough to concern the officials and put on the caution lights. A bit of cowling dropped in the main straightaway just after the start of them. They back off. This is an interesting race panel to the immediate right of the driver. Woods will be good to watch. Brett Morris had a, an outstanding first up win here tonight, held off Rocket Rod Bowen. A very smart drive from Morris. The Fontana engine powering the red number 17 car. So I said a very strong showing. The Australian speed car title here about a month ago. Woods is on the inside of the fourth row, outside. But the third row is Morris in 17. The line looks good as they move up the straightaway. The jump is in car 50. Stanbrook, Morris, one of the early movers. He's looking for a way around Church as they go to the back straightaway. Down to the back shoot this time. Morris is certainly getting a fast run. Now it's Woods in car number 13. On the wick and running the inside line. Trying to get past John Church. A touch of wheels coming onto the main straightaway. Puts cars in all directions. Stuart Hale was the one to come off worse and drops back into sixth place. John Church around the outside of the 96 car as we see the field settle down in the back shoot with Woods making the big charge from fourth in car number 13. He's on the outside of Ron Liddell as they come back to the straightaway. Ahead of him, Stanbrook in car number 50 and leading the field is Morris in car number 17. OK, it's settled down as we expected it would. A two-car race. Ron Liddell gets into trouble in the back shoot and is passed by two cars, but as they come back to the home straightaway, the equation is as follows. Five laps to go, 17, Brett Morris in front and car number 13, Bob Woods in second. Yeah, Brett Morris really shot to the front there very, very quickly. Weaved his magic through some of the slower cars. Bobby Wood struggled. There's still plenty of time left as they come around this time to cross the start finish line. There remains four laps to go. Both the front two drivers racing on a similar line. Both nice and high on the back straight. They duck down to run low to mid track. Woods got the best of that corner, three laps remaining, and the veteran Bobby Woods is starting to close on Brent Morris. Woods perhaps running a car length towards the inside further than Morris is, and that is paying off at this stage, maybe a horsepower difference as well. Woods really is closing in on Morris, and we're going to have a fantastic two laps to the chequered flag. Now, Bobby Woods went to the outside that time. He has paid the penalty, and he is now back, I guess, 10 car lengths on the race leader. D was doing so nicely running that inside line, and maybe time will run out now with one lap remaining. They pass Evan Harris. Well, Morris does. He bobbles. Evan Harris is running exactly the line Bob Woods wants to run. Woods was forced to wait as they come out of turn number three and four. Brett Morris captures his second victory from as many starts. Bobby Woods finishes second, and Brett's time is 2 minutes 13.54 seconds. And as he finishes as the third place getter, Stanbrook crosses the line. So, uh, the Graham Parton in the second row there with Ravel, Glenn Ravel in this one. Third row, Mark Brown inside on 20. Uh, position 5 in car 22. The other's moving up. Rob Barron back there in the fourth row on his own. He'll give this one a fair shake. Adrian Maher will too, I think, as they come up to the main straightaway to take the green and start this eight-lap journey. It's uh, Glenn Stewart. 
a little out of shape going through the first corner. Ravel is challenged on the inside by Bowen, who has to back off a little bit. He's in fourth, goes to the tail of the Ravel car once again as they come off the top turn. Brown is trying to come through on the outside. They get very crossed up in the main straightaway. Ravel edges around the outside of Ma to take second. Bowen's there in fourth. The race leader is Glenn Stewart in the back straightaway. And Mark Brown is sticking to Rob Bowen like super glue as they come back to the straightaway. Here's a big move by Bowen on the inside. What a pass. Two drivers to take him into the lead. And there's still six laps to go. It's Brown, the chaser on the outside. He's doing it very high. Takes him into third place. If he can claim second now from Ravel, he's got half a shot. But if it runs flag to flag, I think Bowen's going to be the winner. Fantastic pass by Bowen on one and a half laps ago to claim first position. And I'll tell you what, you can put whatever engine you like underneath the, uh, the hood of this number 75 car, but the man in the seat is awfully, awfully talented. Bowen out of turn number two, driving the perfect corner. He goes down the back straight away. Brown has broken three in the second spot. 22, but it's a long, long chase ahead of him with three laps to go as they cross the start finish line once more. Bowen is on fire tonight, really running hot. Goes to the back chute, absolutely reveling in track conditions and the fact that he's got this Cosworth working the way he wants it. A puff of smoke comes out of 53, but Stewart continues on now. Two laps to go, and uh, Bowen is really firming as a guy to watch in tonight's main event. The Tats Trophy race with Brown certain to finish in the mind the way he's driving in this heat. 22 off track, slightly now back on line as Bowen takes the flag with one to go. Yep, they'll do it uh, very, very tough to catch Rocket Rod Bowen tonight. Though, we've seen Troy Jenkins, Brett Morris, Bob Woods, all perform brilliantly tonight. Check it, flag time, Rocket Rod Bowen. A time of 2.12.21, 2 minutes 12.21. Brown is second, Ravel third, and Ma rounding up the four. Right out for Sean Wilkinson in 91. Good performance earlier on, very encouraging for the youngster. And Craig Neal, car 15 rounds out the 10. The pace car be, hasn't been given the bird, just signalling get off the track. We're about to go racing. Again, an eight lap journey. Troy the boy Jenkins trying to get that outside rear a little warm. He shares the fourth row with Stephen Graham. Plenty of talent there. Ready to go racing, Norm Jackson, Sheldon Ollie. Share the duties. Norm Jackson should dictate the pace when he jumps. We're racing, he's jumped, and we are racing. Norm Jackson leads them down for the first time. Troy the boy tries the outside line. Stephen Graham through the middle of him and Leah. And Stephen Graham picks the ace in that pack. Fantastic job there. Stephen Graham right in between Jenkins and Leah. Down the main straightaway, we have a new race leader, and it's Alan Day in 74. Storm and Norm Jackson relegated to position number two. John Field, Stephen Graham, Troy Jenkins starting to make some waves further back in the pack. Graham is the big mover at this stage, though you don't want to wait too much longer because I tell you what, Alan Day has the potential to run away with this one. They go down the back straight away again into three and four. In fact, these uh, three battling for the miners are getting closer and closer. Stephen Graham perhaps a little frustrated looking for a way around. He does just that, has a look on the high line, a little too high for our Stevens liking. He's a guy who likes the low line on the racetrack. And Alan Day enjoying a nice little break out front at this stage. The battle for second, third and fourth is sensational. Field goes a little wide, Graham again splits the pack. And Stephen Graham winds up from position seven. He's split two packs of two and he's moved up into position number two. Alan Day race leader Stephen Graham second Norm Jackson third fourth is John Field where's our mate Troy the boy he's back into the pit enclosure so more problems in team Jenkins number 78 Alan Day has all but stopped and here comes Graham around the outside
outside. Again, a new race leader. Alan Day trying to hold his line. Norm Jackson a little bit shaky as he came out of four. John Field and Stephen Graham making their way through the pack. And unfortunately, Alan Day has not got enough in reserve to keep on going. Stephen Graham will lead them from the restart. Alan Day, I dare say, switched the car off. He is not a happy chappy inside the vehicle. Pretending the steering wheel was a punching bag there for a second. That's remaining. Restart cone on the back shed. And they're off and racing now. They'll take the green. Stephen Graham runs about the middle of the racetrack. He'll get quicker now, as he only runs the bottom part of the racetrack normally. Feeds it through there, followed by Jackson, Field and Lear. And they're starting to bounce away from the rest of the, uh, the pack now. Two laps to go this time around. Stephen Graham certainly did this one the hard way. Started out of position number seven. A shame to see Sean Wilkinson pulling over on the back straightaway. Debutant, not a happy second heat. Stephen Graham into turn three and four, as I said, he did it from position number seven, and he's done it well to collect the checker as Graham first in next lap, should I say. They have three laps from the restart. I thought it was two. Nothing's changed. Graham has put in a stellar performance. The Valvoline John Sydney racing car, he collects the checker. Second is Storm and Norm Jackson. Third, John Field. Fourth, Gavin Lear, Sheldon Olling and Phil Chilton. No time in heat number six of the speed cars, of course, due to the, uh, the stoppage caused by Alan Day. But... Yeah, Stanbrook has a new motor, so... Fifth in five. Should be fairly competitive. No Ron Liddell for this one, so... Made the, uh, okay, off the top turn, Church. Hang Stanbrook out to dry. If we get the green, he'll be comfortably in front of turn number one. That's how it pans out. Through the first corner, to the back straightaway. Celebrating his birthday today is John Church, president of the Speed Car Club. And uh, best thoughts would be riding with him from wife Marcia and family as they come back to the home straightaway. One down, seven to go. And he's heading for the feature race tonight. Well, Paul Stanbrook uh, closes it up fairly tightly behind him as they go down the, uh, the back straight now. That uh, clutter of uh, cars at the tail of the field, all a couple of first-nighters, and uh, gee whiz, <laughs> desperately needs a directory. Off the here. Um, into the bottom turn, John Church still leads. Five and a half laps remain. Paul Stanbrook runs in second spot as they go down the back straight. Sheldon Olling is running in third, and there right at the back of the field is Wilkinson trying to pass his first car in active oh. competition, and that's a big roll in the top turn. Couldn't pick the, uh, the, the black driver. screen. Um, but he is OK. The car just took a little uh, dipper over there, and uh, he's quite OK them to uh, line up now for the restart on the back straight. Sheldon Olling slips into third place, the position he held at the time of the stoppage, so the line is good, and John Church gets on the whip quickly. Back towards the main straightaway, Stanbrook is coming with him. They've got the green, and Stanbrook looks to the inside for a chance to pass. Olling rides rear guard action. Back straightaway, Stanbrook getting a bit crossed up there, but <laughs> sort of floating down the back straightaway. Stanbrook has got the edge. Expect five to come down a little lower. No church decides to stay middle of the track. 50 leads five, leads 73 with four laps to go. He has not much in at the front running three. Sheldon Olling, the son of a famous batter. And uh, Johnny Church, Paul Stanbrook now leads it from Church. Olling is back there in third. And the machine one back behind him is uh, 95, of course, and that is uh, Frank Roderick. I thought Ollie got a little closer to uh, Church that time by two and a quarter laps to run as they head down the front straightaway. Make that two. And Stanbrook engine really giving some buzz sound. Oh, problems there for uh, Frank Roderick. Frank Roderick, it's, uh, it's running out of water, oil, and just about everything else by the look at the moment. Uh, that's not a good sign for him, and let's hope that he's not uh, doing a, a litter job as well. One lap to go. Final time around, number five is slowing as well. That's John Church, and the the uh, car that's uh, blowing a lot of smoke is actually gaining on Church. 
There's the final corner coming up, and Roderick makes a move on the outside. I think Church will probably hang on to claim second. The winner's gone past. That's uh, Stanbrook. Coming in second is Church, and third to the wire is Holling. And fourth is Frank Roderick with 69. Evan Harris. Ooh. And Lund uh, defied everyone to, uh, to stay in his draft. So, Rod Bowen from the back of the field might do it just a little tough against the man starting on the outside of the front row and the man back on the outside of the third row. Scrappy old start. Down the front straight away, didn't worry. The man we thought was going to make a big outside charge and that of course was Brent Morris. Glenn Ravel just jumped and probably will require another finger pointing exercise. It'll need Morris to jump at the same time Ravel does and that looks pretty good, Ravel. Fades to nothing. Well, the greens remain on as they go through the first corner, so Brett Morris has got the advantage with Brown in second, Stephen Graham third, and in fourth spot in car 75, Rod Bowen. Ravel's out of it already. We've got the race split into two groups and less than one lap completed. In the main straightaway, Morris with a new motor. Oh, almost upside down was car 22 Brown, trying to capitalise on that error. Oops, a daisy on the wick and then off the wick. 22 and 75, Brown and Bowen there now fighting for third. Graham's comfortably in second. Morris leads, but looking a little shaky. Look at this battle for third. Whoa! Rod sticks it inside and catches it on the outside as they head through the bottom turn off the back straightaway. Morris has got problems. No, he hasn't. It's just the way he's driving it. From inside to the outside. Watching down here, he goes straight to the low line of the racetrack. He's trying to get it back under control. Stephen Gray, they ought to christen him Joe Cool. He just sits in here, but right behind him there's a tornado blowing, and it's called Rod Bowen. They head down the back straight, Morris, your race leader in the red 17. Here comes Bowen again, pestering the inside of Stephen Graham. Couldn't do it that time. He loves that corner, though, and passing on the inside. Once more, they go to the back straightaway. Graham looking very conservative tonight. The two cars touch. It was Graham, and oh. Bowen's around. He's targeted, hit by Brown. Into the back straightaway comes uh, one of the slower cars. It was Mark Brown, actually, that caught uh, Rod Bowen on the yeah. way through. Rod was all, uh, got it out of shape on the exit to that turn, but he is okay. In fact, you'll find he's just stepped out of the car. It's his first night with that Cosworth. The bad luck indeed to uh, Rod Bowen. Let's hope that the car isn't uh, severely damaged. It was a touch from Mark Brown. And it, I think it was just centrifugal full two wheels. But gee, you've got to give the guy uh, 99 out of 100, well, maybe about 101 out of 100 for trying. Eight starters to four with three to run. Sorry, eight starters, three remaining, four to run. That's pretty good. Okay, no doubt about uh, Brett Morris. I tell you what, uh, he's an exciting young guy. New car from the States, he debuted in the Australian Championship. He's got a fair touch of the throttle and uh, where the car's running. As he heads down the back straight, he opens that up to about eight car lengths over Glenn Revelle. He was... Uh, left wanting a little bit in the early laps of this race. He was giving high lines a shot, then back to the inside, then back to the outside, but he's he settled down a bit here and uh, heads down the back straight away with two and a half laps remaining and will uh, certainly uh, take the Stars race tonight. Ravel's still in second. Terry King is in third. OK. Towards the back straight away. He's probably just getting himself settled for the feature race to come because that's about the only thing occupying him now. He's got the track all to himself. Brett Morris in car 17. Car had uh, six races in the States before being shipped out by Brett Morris for the uh, Australian summer. And uh, it looks like the 17 car is proving a very reliable entry for him as he takes it to the top turn, brings it through turn four, main straightaway, and 17 gets the money in tonight's Star Scratch Race. Yeah, well done to Brett Morris. He's across the line first. Glenn Rebell is home there for second spot in third place. Will be taken by Terry King. Him? Unfortunately, no Bob Woods. Yeah, that's a pity. 13 cars will start this 20 lap journey. Shame for the speed car boys because, geez, they've put on a great year this year. Lighting up the night sky here in the Olympic City. Parramatta City Raceway is the venue for tonight's four wheel action. Norm Jackson and Graham Parton are the pace setters and let's go racing in the 20 lap main event. Parton on the outside gets the jump as they go into the first corner. Keep your eye on Brett Morris. He is out. Oh.
There goes Ravel. He found an opening. That'll only get Morris going twice as hard now around the outside. Look at this. He's got his dander up. He works the outside. Takes Ravel again. Zeroes in behind Jackson. Come on, guys, he said. You're not running quick enough for me. The youngster is off and running like a house on fire. He works the back straight away. Comes up on Parton. Decides to go the outside. This is great stuff. And he takes the lead inside two laps. Great stuff from Brett Morris, who started from row number four. Inside, Mark Brown trying to make his way through the field. Has a little tangle with G. Ravel. Brown moves up to occupy position number four. At this stage, he will be the only one that will make any inroad on Brett Morris. If it goes flag to flag, you can forget it. Barring any mechanical mishaps, this one is Morris's. Down into turn three and four. Look at the gap he is building up. He's exiting four as they're entering down the main straightaway. That Fontana engine, Joey's done a great job on that one. Fantastic stuff from Brett Morris. Graham Parton, Norm Jackson, Mark Brown on the outside of Jackson. Brown monoing down the back straightaway. Glenn Ravel says, I want a piece of this party. Let's do a bit of motor racing. What a great battle we've got going on. Mark Brown's just realised, hey, my car's not set up to run round the outside. I'm going to do this on the inside. And I tell you what, Brown's just figured out something very special in that number 22 car. He passes three cars in one foul swoop. Oh, Ravel, Leah. OK, Ravel gets around sideways. What a blow. I reckon Morris was going to knock heaps off the 20-lap record tonight. Ravel's just taken care of that one for him. Not his fault. Dixon moves up one spot in front, so Parton runs in the second spot. 97 Norm Jackson runs Leah. That looks like the starting one. If Glenn Ravel goes to the infield, will take no further part in this one, and they will get a restart lap uh, the next time around. Ten laps to go, 4.5 kilometres. Remaining, Morris, Parton, Jackson Brown. Jackson King. Brown. Now, for mine, Mark Brown will be the one to keep your eye on. He's in the red 33 car, occupying position number four. He'll be the one, if any, that can catch the race leader. Oh, Morris jumps on the wick early. Caught them and napping. He certainly did. Here comes Brown again, but his car is, uh, looks like it should be part of the handicap zone. I tell you, he's doing a tough tonight. He has a big go here on the outside. Finally gets it around. That was a smooth lap and probably the only smooth lap that he's cut in the race so far. So Mark Brown makes it up into second. Graham Parton is third. Terry King is the next one, followed by Jackson and Leah. Liddell coming up through the pack. Adrian Maher is the next behind them. Nine laps to go. Brett Morris, the 17 car. And Brett the Jet is off and running and opens up that gap. But I tell you what, I don't... Uh think that he will hold that all the way because if Brown can get this car of his to handle watch him eat into the lead they come across the start finishing line it's out to about eight car lengths as they make their way to the bottom corner but Brown's car bicycles again very light on the inside setup very spongy for uh, a tacky track and in fact that gap is open the race leader Morris going away from him with seven laps to go Brett Morris uh, Mark Brown's got problems that's the end of the Victorian, I think you'll find. He's trying to drift up track. The best bet might be to go inside. He does just that. Good on you, Mark Brown, letting the race run its course. And Brett Morris has not a worry in the world at this stage. Almost half a lap separates him and second place. Second place is hotly contested at this stage. Terry King, the veteran, looking for an inside run on another veteran, Graham Parton, and these two will battle for the remaining five laps. Gavin Lear having a big shot around the outside. It's taken a bit of uh, deep breaths for Gavin to have that one around the outside on the clay track, but he gets up into a fourth spot as they work the back straight away. In the meantime, Morris is across the strike with four laps to go. That is now out. Look at him running away from this field. King works over Graham Parton on the inside as they come down the back, down the front straight now. And King goes in and under Parton, but uh, Terry shows a reluctance to want to have a shot on the outside. Morris already lapping cars. That is out again. An incredible. He's out over half a lap to second spot. And if this race went another five laps, I'd say probably lap third place. Terry King's had enough. He idles down the front straight away into the bottom corner. 
Brett Morris in the meantime is already in amongst the lap cars. Second spot being held by Parton. Third is Gavin Lear. And look at uh, Morris. He is not eased out of the throttle. He's coming around like gangbusters. Oh, Morris very, very sideways as he collects the white flag. He leads off to about seven tenths there. The heart rate, heart rate would be well and truly up. No, he jumps back into it. Folks, in appreciation of one heck of a drive, put your hands together for Brett Morris. Yeah, well deserved. Fantastic stuff. We need a few more Brett Morrises because they uh, they really do want to race to win. Second spot will go to the veteran Graham Parton. Third place will go to Gavin Lear in the zero car as they come across the line. But an outstanding uh, performance from Brett Life almost unbearable for them early in the piece this evening. In the meantime, the uh, parade podium coming out onto the racetrack will be going down to uh, Steve Roman in just a, a moment or so. And uh, we'll have the rod at any stage during the course of the uh, evening, and certainly in the main event. Exciting young prospect, Gavin Lear, gets up for uh, third in that one, and uh, Graham has second spot. Just waiting on the Brett Morris. Put your hands together with a very warm Parramatta welcome for the first lady of a true Speedway legend. Would you welcome to Sydney, Dee Tattersall, the wife of Bob Two Gun Tattersall. Dee, two decades on, Bob's memory is still strong. Your memories of Australia, still fond ones? Yes, they are. I got very excited here tonight. Uh, I think I could become addicted again after 23 years of being away from it. And I want to thank Mike for bringing me to Sydney so I could be here to join in in all the fun. Let me ask you just one question before we hand out the hardware for Tat's Trophy, which is what we named tonight's event in your and Bob's honour. What was the main trait that made Bob such a memorable driver and person? I think it was his personality. He loved the people. He loved what he was doing. And I think that made him one of the best. D, I'd ask you to help out now, Stewie, if we could have the trophies. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, third place to the chequered flag in tonight's Tats Trophy event. And I'm sure he's glad to be home too. He drives car zero. Put your hands together for Gavin Lear. D. Gavin, this gives me great pleasure to present this to you in the memory of Bob Tattersall. That's one you should treasure, fella. Thanks a lot. Um, Bob Tattles is a pretty good driver. I've never seen him, but a lot of people talk about him, so he must have been good. Um, the track, it wasn't real good. It had a lot to be desired, but anyway, it's been a long time since I've been up here. I think the last time I had a wing over me, but anyway, I hope I come back soon. Well said. Gavin Lear, ladies and gentlemen, third to the chequered flag, and an editorial comment to boot. Second home tonight in car number 11 and he's one of the most consistent drivers we've got he's not a rookie he drives 11 to the limit put your hands together for graham parton congratulations graham thank you special night yeah it's very good uh first time i've won anything uh concerned with bob tattis we used to go and watch him years and years ago and uh he was a great driver and i'm very pleased to be up here i'd like to thank the boys that helped me tonight david and uh, patrick and uh, Edward and uh, Robert, and I'd like to thank Ian Savile for building me a good, strong motor. Okay, and congratulate the other boys, Brett and Gavin. Thanks very much. Well said, a nice acceptance speech. Graham Parton. Ladies and gentlemen, there can only be one winner. There's also almost something generational about this from the 60s and 70s. The name Tattersall was the legend in Australia. He contributed so much. And tonight, the feature race went to a youngster who streaked the field, won by more than half a lap. He drives car 17. He's got a huge future. Put your hands together. The winner of Tats Trophy is Brett Morris. Congratulations, Brett. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate this. Well, certainly something for me to treasure. Uh, <coughs> it wasn't the best of tracks. But, uh, you know, it was a race of attrition. All the good guys fell out. My luck. Um, oh, with exceptions. Yeah, we, we've had a good night. I, I don't mind a rough track. This is the first night that uh, we've had the engine sorted out. The car's great. The motor's great now. So we've only got things, better things ahead. 
Also, I'd like to just thank uh, STP for the sponsorship tonight. Uh, the crew, Gary, Ward, and Craig. Without those guys, quite frankly, I wouldn't be out there. Uh, and, and Alan Elix from Dominate, and Terry for his help as well. So thanks very much. And all the crowd. Thank you. Congratulate Brett Morris, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd ask you, because we still have the tin top race to go once more, would you welcome warmly Dee Tattersall on this short visit to Australia? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Steve. Steve. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, uh, Steve. And our main event tonight, we have Russell Bailey in car number 22 starting out of pole. Greg Hodges in car number six starts out of position number two.